so welcome. Thank you very much for coming to uh, this press conference on the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership. Uh, the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership uh, is a multi-stakeholder collaborative platform uh, that was announced at the uh, Financing for Development Conference in Addis Ababa back in 2015. Uh, to provide a practical platform for uh, institutions and for, for capital providers to uh, action the, the funding gap related to the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, since the announcement a little less than two years ago, uh, Sustainable Development Investment Partnership now represents 35 member institutions from across the world, including governments, development finance institutions, multilateral development banks, commercial banks, and pension funds. Uh, blended finance is a critical element of what SDIP is trying to promote. This is the strategic use of uh, public and philanthropic funds to help catalyze private capital uh, in emerging and frontier markets, which is particularly important in light of the recent Asian Development Bank uh, report that found that in uh, developing Asia and the Pacific region alone, $1.7 trillion a year will be required for infrastructure to maintain current growth rates and to ensure that the investments are made for, for mitigation and adaptation for climate change. I have a distinguished panel here today that's going to be discussing a few important developments about SDIP, particularly here in the ASEAN region. Uh, we have the, His Excellency Mr. Vongse Vichsot, who is Vice Chairman of the Supreme National Economic Council and Secretary of State of the Ministry of Economy and Finance here in the Kingdom of Cambodia. We have to, to his left, Mr. Carby Leggett, who is head of public sector and development organizations for Asia at Standard Chartered Bank. And Mr. Donald P. Kanak, who is chairman of East Spring Investments. So with that, I'd like to open up with His Excellency to give us some, some brief remarks about uh, Cambodia's involvement in the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership. Thank you, Philip. Let me start by stressing our pleasure to be here in this press conference on the establishment of the SDIP, I would call it in short to save time, ASEAN Hub. I would like to confirm that Cambodia has become, is proud to be the first member from ASEAN to join this initiative following the signing of an agreement at the World Economic Forum in January 2017 in Davos, Switzerland. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome and celebrate the establishment of the SDIP, ASEAN Hub, which has 35 participating members from governments, financial and development institutions across the world. And Cambodia highly values and recognizes the SDIP as an innovation platform for mobilizing and that work of private investment resource managed by the World Economic Forum and OECD with the objective of reducing the shortage of financing and building up countries' capacity for realizing the UN Sustainable Development Goals through coordination between public and private sectors as to remove trade barriers and alleviate investment risk aiming to accelerate and mobilize private investment and resources to sustainably develop infrastructure in developed countries, including our country. I hope the SDIP's ASEAN Infrastructure Hub will receive strong support from other countries in the region, especially ASEAN member, and be joined by them to strengthen and expand our deep cooperation within the region. Again, I would like to welcome, highly praise, and thank for your presence in this World Connect Forum on ASEAN. I would like to announce the operation of the SDIP ASEAN Hub from this moment on, and Cambodia will host the first event of SDIP later this year. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Leggett, can I pass the floor over to you? Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and first of all, let me thank the Kingdom of Cambodia for hosting a fantastic event this week uh, and the World Economic Forum as well. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Standard Chartered uh, Bank uh, places uh, an, an enormous amount of importance on this initiative. Um, it's been our honor uh, and pleasure uh, to be a founding member uh, of the SDIP uh, and a member of the steering committee. And it's uh, with great pleasure that we've seen the 
membership uh, grow from 20 uh, participants uh, in 2015 until 35 uh, today. I think that fact alone signals uh, the importance of this initiative. Um, at Standard Chartered, we see this uh, SDIP as an, an action-oriented platform um, that will allow us to uh, see and consider uh, critical infrastructure projects uh, and review for financing, projects that uh, in many other cases uh, may have been deemed by the market to be unbankable. Blended finance uh, is the cutting edge uh, of, of financing uh, Asia's critical infrastructure needs, uh, and we believe that it will have a fundamental impact in terms of unlocking uh, uh, the, the required financing. Um, we are uh, honored to be part of this initiative uh, and, uh, and look forward to, um, to putting our, our balance sheet and our technical expertise to work uh, in support of it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Mr. Kanak. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Your Excellency and Carby for um, encouraging remarks. Um, let me first introduce um, East Spring Investments. Established in 1994, East Spring Investments is the Asian asset management business of Prudential PLC, an international financial services company. Our unique Asian insights, international reach, and proven investment excellence make us a trusted asset manager for a growing list of institutional and retail clients in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. We provide investment solutions across a range of asset classes, including equities, fixed income, multi-asset, infrastructure, and alternatives. Our infrastructure team has extensive buy-side and sell-side experience. It helps our clients to realize significant opportunities for infrastructure projects in emerging markets driven by economic and population growth, urbanization, and progressive regulatory frameworks. There's a big funding need in all emerging Asian markets for more local currency and offshore financing of infrastructure projects. And infrastructure is critical to ASEAN's continuing growth and competitiveness. We believe that as a long-term investor, the insurance industry can be a provider of capital to sustainable infrastructure projects. Our focus is on finding infrastructure projects that meet our investment objectives of stability, strong economics, and that pass legal, social, and environmental due, dil due diligence. Eastspring views SDIP as an effective platform to bring the private and public sectors together and encourage the market opportunities for the private sector in emerging and frontier markets, including through blended finance. I'm pleased to formally announce that Eastspring Investments will be joining SDIP as the 35th member institution and that eSpring looks forward to being actively involved in the activities of SDIP, the, Asian, the ASEAN hub, uh, to scale the flow of sustainable infrastructure projects across the region. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And we welcome eSpring with uh, open arms. We look forward to uh, having you bring your experience and expertise in the region uh, to bear as we, as we expand here in ASEAN. Uh, perhaps I can just ask you a, a few questions. Uh, Your Excellency, if I could, I could direct the first question to you. Um, what, what exactly is, is the biggest challenge you face here in the Kingdom of Cambodia in terms of getting your projects to, to bankability? And, and where do you see the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership helping you to, to move that process forward? Uh, I think, first of all, uh, Number one is that we don't have our own financial resources sufficiently to finance our need in infrastructures. And number two is about our sufficient capacity and expertise to mobilize, to work on the framework or platform so that we can attract you know, sufficient capital to meet the need in, in financing infrastructures. Capacity in terms of put everything Right, in, we call it right framework in terms of policy, in terms of, uh, especially in the capacity side, you know, project identification, project formulation, and the project implementation and project management. So there's a, a long way to go, but by having this facility, I think it will bring us expertise, know-how, 
and a kind of leveling field, which I would like to stress importance of private, you know, commercial perspective is about efficiency, about innovation that we would like to see uh, uh, in this country. But on the other hand, I think capacity is still the, the main issue that we have to tackle. So this area, but by having this mechanism platform, I think by joining it, I think we will, it will have addressed those issues, especially the issue of viability, you talk sustainability, and a issue of so fair share of risk and benefit of the investment and by the minister and the country as a recipient. Mr. Leggett, if I, I could pose a similar question to you. Uh, Standard Charter has a long-standing uh, tradition and operation here across the ASEAN region. I believe you've been uh, in Cambodia alone for over 100 years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, where does, where does SCIP come in with regards to, to your regional strategy in terms of how you are uh, able to engage and, and build your business uh, across Asia? Sure. Yeah, thank, thank you for the question. Uh, Stanchart is uh, highly committed uh, to the ASEAN market. We are operating in um, all of the countries uh, here. We um, have a deep commitment uh, to uh, banking these markets and banking them in a, in a way that, that drives sustainable development. Um, infrastructure, as we all have heard over the past uh, couple of days here at the at the World Economic Forum, is uh, fundamental to unlocking uh, the full potential of the ASEAN countries, um, and the, the deficit is significant. Uh, there's no single solution uh, to plugging that deficit. Uh, it's not it's not a the the um, the required investment is not something that uh, government balance sheets alone can can provide for. It's not something that commercial banking uh, uh, balance sheets alone can provide for, or multilateral development banks for that matter. Uh, the only solution is to bring all three of these together uh, and uh, bring the power uh, of, of each of these, uh, each of these parts uh, to, to bear uh, on, the, on the, uh, the, the totality of the infrastructure requirement. Um, we believe that pooling uh, multilateral development capital together with commercial banking capital together with government resources uh, allows to uh, risk manage the projects more effectively. Uh, it allows for uh, lending tenors to be extended uh, and it allows for uh, greater uh, uh, risk management of issues like currency risk uh, or, uh, or other related uh, uh, political risks. So we, 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 we broadly see blended finance as something that crowds in uh, additional liquidity uh, and, is, uh, and is very complementary uh, across, uh, across uh, these three components I mentioned. Um, we have uh, at Standard Chartered a very robust uh, uh, infrastructure business uh, that we have actually engaged, uh, actively engaged in for many years. Um, and we have a team of experts, uh, both on the advisory side as well as the, the, the project export finance side, uh, that gets uh, engaged uh, in this business. Um, and we are uh, looking forward to working together with the ASEAN Hub uh, to bring this expertise to bear, uh, to contribute to uh, unlocking ASEAN's potential. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kanak, if I can pass it over to you, I, I know that East Spring has been very involved with a number of different uh, initiatives across uh, the ASEAN region. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, how do you see SDIP as being different from some of those other initiatives that you're, you're currently involved in? Uh, SDIP is global and regional, so it offers opportunities for sharing, not just within this region, but from other regions to this region. That's one way. Um, secondly, I'd say that uh, as it's set up, SDIP is focusing on what I would call the practical and actionable side of this work. Um, by sharing projects um, that are priority projects of governments with institutional investors and allowing a conversation to occur that can help those projects become improved and investable, um, this will should unlock a lot more potential for financing. And so I think that focus on being very practical and actionable and sharing information and having that dialogue and having being action oriented makes SDIP unique. Uh, Your Excellency, I saw you nodding there. Um, do, do you share, you share similar views about the, the, the unique aspect of SDIP in the, in the region? Uh, I would not say it's a unique but I would say a kind of additional tools which will help complement to the existing tool and framework 
that exists within the region. But I agree with you that this brings also a global perspective and commercial and institutional investor perspective to the financing infrastructure in this region, which is, I think, very critical to this country. We are so used to the government financing, to the multilateral you know, bank or financial institution financing. I think, uh, on the one hand, I think you, you, you need a kind of different perspective also so that you can see the you know, disadvantages or advantages of those, and you can look for a kind of very, uh, I think, uh, fit, uh, solution to your country or to the region in terms of you call, call it blood financing or whatever in terms of risk uh, uh, I think mitigation in terms of uh, making the project more investable or bankable whatever uh, that's some kind of diversity but uh, in the way that it would lead to a kind of delivering a good projects good impact for the countries and for the region that's my point here. I don't see it as a kind of unique, it is a kind of you know, innovation, I would say innovative uh, way of financing. And now there are a lot of understanding, study research on you know, that given the needs you need in, in financing infrastructures, the government itself and the existing financial institution cannot cope with the needs. So we need us to bring private capital in. And the, on the other side, there are a lot of fun available in the market, liquidity. So why don't you make use of that? Mm -hmm. And then this can also allow government to save money that they also find it difficult to collect also in terms of taxation, whatever, to save for other priorities yeah. like health, like education, where you cannot attract so much, you know, private sectors. That's the point. It's about sustainable, you know, in financing, not just about the infrastructure, but in terms of fiscal sustainability for the country as a whole. Thank you. Very good. So, like you, you mentioned before, that uh, you know, blended finance is a critical piece of, of what you're doing. Are there specific projects that you can give us some examples of where blended finance has really helped to, to, to mobilize those, those uh, projects forward and could be used as a case study for us to, to look at as we as we push forward here in the ASEAN region? Yeah, we we've had. Um, I mean, Standard Charter has, has executed a number of, of transactions. Uh, that have involved uh, multilateral development banks. Um, we have active discussions with the World Bank around their guarantee programs. Um, we've also been actively engaged with uh, the Chinese uh, d development entities in terms of um, credit enhancing or, or risk participating uh, in, in, uh, in our transactions. Um, and the, the, I, the landscape of transactions uh, that can be utilized in this manner uh, are, are, are very broad, uh, from roads, bridges, uh, power facilities, um, uh, even um, schools and, and hospitals in some cases. So I think the, the concept of blended finance is one that is very broad, uh, and that's exactly what, what, uh, what, wh why it's such a powerful concept. It can be employed across a number of different industries and, and, uh, and, and utilized to risk manage uh, you know, all, all aspects of the transaction. Okay. okay, now to get a little more technical, uh, Mr. Kanak, you've been involved with uh, a number of the discussions around the SDIP ASEAN hub and, and what's planned for this year. Could you perhaps talk a little bit about what the SDIP ASEAN hub will look to do over the next year or so as, as, it, as it builds out uh, its, uh, its activities? Uh, well, Philip, I, 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 as far as I'm aware, the strategy is still evolving, but based on the discussions the last couple of days here, my sense is there was a coalescing around two priorities for this year. One of them was um, the first one being to map the universe in the region of project preparation facilities and other support facilities that are available to help projects move along. There was a bit of question around was that there was awareness among the community, investment community, or other communities of all the these PPFs, um, and, and so mapping those and helping to share information about those and understand if there are any gaps is one priority one, and then priority two would be country level work, starting with the Kingdom of Cambodia and then building on the work that's already been happening with the business working group in Indonesia, taking country level focus and trying to share project information and again this issue of helping to exchange the points of view and to try to make projects be um, more financeable. Great. 
So I, I realize we're running close to short of time. I don't know if there's any questions from the floor or the moment. Perhaps we can open it up. Um, if you could just introduce your name and organization, My please. name is Abby. I'm with DevEx. Um, I was just wondering if you could give us an update on, on projects and progress since the launch, um, and specifically how they've aided the sustainability. Sure. So uh, first, is there another question at all? Hi, I'm Jessica from Eco Business in Singapore. I'm just wondering how does DSDIP see its role in the context of the AIIB, which has very similar objectives? And also, what are some of the priority areas for the ASEAN Hub? Are there specific projects that you've already earmarked? Thank you. Thank you. I'll just address the, the, the first question with regards to the SDIP. So uh, to date, the SDIP has built a pipeline of 65 projects of a total value of uh, $40 billion, and exceeding $40 billion. Uh, these are large-scale infrastructure projects. In many cases, as you know, they, they do tend to take a, a little bit of time to get to financial close. Uh, however, the feedback we have had from projects is that the SDIP process has been quite effective in helping them to mobilize the capital they need to unblock their projects. So we have two projects already that have indicated to us they've been able to reduce the, the interest rate that they're, they're receiving from the financial community, having passed through SDIP by over 50%, which now allows these projects uh, to, to, to move forward. Uh, for, for your questions with regards to the SDIP uh, uh, hub uh, here in, in ASEAN, perhaps I can pass it over to... to uh, sure, yeah, happy to, happy to address the question on AIB. I, I look at AIB as a truly unique and very, very positive uh, institution. Um, unlike other uh, supranationals or multilateral uh, development institutions, AIIB, uh, as you know, has a unique focus on infrastructure. Um, that's its mandate. That's what it's going to be doing. Uh, and it's focused uh, on the, the Asia region uh, sort of broadly. Um, uh, there is a great uh, uh, opportunity uh, to cooperate together uh, between uh, uh, SDIP and, and uh, AIIB. I think uh, the, the capital resources that AIB will bring to bear um, through its, its very, very robust equity uh, capitalization um, will be a differentiating factor. So we, we view it as very much a complementary institution to what we are trying to achieve, and I think uh, we'll only enhance and, and aid the efforts to, uh, to finance uh, Asia's uh, infrastructure requirements. And just, just if I could add on to that, the, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank yesterday agreed to become an observer of SDIP. So they're very much uh, in, the, in the thoughts and, and, and uh, a part of the future progress of, of SDIP. Your Excellency, did you want to comment from a, from a country Yes, I just want to echo the previous speakers in terms of I uh, <coughs> would not see any conflict to com or if there's a competition, it would be friendly competition between, you know, different scheme like as DIP or AIB, but for us as recipient countries, the more your players are, it's good for us. We have advantages in terms of choosing what would be the best partner. But number two point I want to make is that the need is too big. The needs now and the need, you know, in the future, given the region or in particularly Cambodia, given the development, growth rate, urbanization, connectivity with the country and with the region, I think the need infrastructure is so, so huge. So therefore, I don't think even with this SDIP would be sufficient, you know, uh, in terms of source financing to, 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 to finance the gap, you know, the need infrastructure in this country or in the region. So I think we, this is a, one of the ways to mobilize resources, even in different way, in, in innovative ways, to financing the needs of this country and this region. So I, I, I would like to see a kind of partnership and a kind of cooperation at the same time or kind of friendly competition among players so that this country and this region can benefit. And eventually we have the good quality infrastructure, connectivity, and of course productivity, competitiveness, by then growth could be sustained and people will, be, will have a better life over here through that. Mr. Kanak, did you want to contribute any thoughts on any with regards to the pipeline of projects? I know you're engaged with some cross-regional work here and have some visibility in terms of the, the pipeline of projects. Well, we're just a new member from today, so it's hard <laughs> for me to comment on, on the pipeline through SDIP. But I mean, we see this, this process. I, I, I like your choice of saying not unique but innovative in the sense that it will help us, I think, expand 
the, the range of projects of which we're aware. I mean, we, are, we have other channels and we have a team of people and we have presence in, in most of the markets around the region. So we, we're constantly looking and, and, and discovering and building out um, due diligence efforts on projects, but this expands the, the range of projects. And also, um, I would just comment that we, it helps, I think, when we have public sector, private sector, talking about specifics as opposed to 30,000 feet conceptually, there's a trillions of dollars and so forth. We get down and look at actual projects and actual places that have actual people affected in communities. It helps us focus and get the same vocabulary, right? We can communicate much better and, and, and really work more effectively. So, so I think it's of casting the net broader for helping us be more aware, but also helping us be more efficient and effective in, in getting to conclusion. On the next step forward for Cambodia in particular, I would like to share also that we envisage what's going to happen is that later this year we'll organize a kind of uh, event or workshops on two things on the uh, potential projects pipeline, which is with due involvement, okay, and also on the capacity development on the government side to cope with the you know, new uh, types of uh, scheme. Uh, but based on the potential pipelines, I think we will seek also financing for this feasible study. Hmm. That's a, another challenge. I don't think your CDIP would have that kind of money. But of course, by, work, by working with others, by collaborating with other institutions, we would be able to find those financing. Even sometimes from the government, if the government feels so badly in terms of the needs, you know. So we can also finance. And then we will see through the physical study, what's the problem, what's the risk, what's the issue from the investment point of view, you know, the economic or financial or social or environmental right. or technical. And then we can talk in dialogue, exchange views. You talk about this platform for dialogue so to get to get to understand better each other and found a common ground. And once you understand, you see that, oh, you trust. I talk about trust. Yeah. When we talk about partnership, it's about trust. Yeah. Trust between the investor and the government. And of course, the government also with people who are the beneficiary or are affected by the project also. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is a scenario that I envisage. Okay. Right. Well, with that being said, thank you very much for your time. I'd like to thank the panel. I'd like to officially welcome uh, East Spring Investments to, as the 35th member of, of SDIP. Uh, and we look forward to having more, more announcements and more activities over the coming year as the SDIP ASEAN Hub uh, takes full flight. So thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>